Okay, in this video I'm going to do an overview of the, of the new auto resizing feature um, that I've added to Maya Star. I have another product called Maya Fit and I've basically brought Maya Fit into Maya Star with a few new added um, abilities that Maya Fit doesn't quite have. So, um, so what you want to do is you either want to start off um, with Maya Star already imported into an empty scene and then importing your mesh clothing making sure that your mesh clothing does not have any skeleton or it's not rigged to anything um, you do not want the, the your mesh clothing to be rigged now if you've already rigged it you can save your um, your mesh weights any way you decide that you want it that you want to do it um, there's all different ways you can save your mate your weight uh, your weights from your mesh if you've already rigged your mesh clothing. Um, so, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a mesh top that is already, that's not rigged. Um, if it was rigged, um, what I would normally do is I have a, a plugin that I got do downloaded from Creative Crash for free called Dora Skin Weights. And I made a little button so that I can open it up real easy. And then I just select my my mesh that is rigged, um, and I go to export, and I give it a name, and I click export, and then the name would pop up here. If it's not on here, you could you just select one and you go down until you find it, and I and do vertex order, and then you would click import. That's at a later stage, um, um, but that's what you would do if you had already rigged your mesh clothing and you wanted to make sure you saved your weights because um, we're going to have to be reply we're going to have to be applying those saved weights to a, a a duplicate mesh that has been reshaped into a different size so um, I'm going to go to the move tool now say see my my center point my pivot point is down at the zero of X Y and Z um, but say your pivot point was up here um, you would want to um, have snap to grid on, hold the D key and middle mouse button. It's that simple because we're going to be doing something here in a minute that you're going to need that. Um, so, okay, so first thing you do is we open up Maya Star. I'm going to tear it off so it stays open and I'm going to activate Maya Star and that's going to bring in the avatar and the skeleton in the default uh, position. Now, you could do the auto resizing, and I'm going to tear it off, with the avatar at the default size, but I find that's actually very problematic because the, the avatar in Second Life is actually quite small, and the vertices can get really, really close together. And if they get too close together, the auto sizing um, doesn't like it, and they start to interfere with each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the avatar and the skeleton 10 times bigger. But lucky for you, I've already created a, a, a Mel script that will do it all automatically. All you have to do is, with nothing selected, you don't even have anything to select it, you just click Large Avatar 10x. Boom. Your avatar is now 10 times larger. And the, and the skeleton is also 10 times larger. Um, <clears throat> What actually happened was that this little script I wrote created a, a locator and it renamed the locator and it parented the M pelvis bone to the locator and then it changed the scale of the locator. It changed the scale of the locator to 10 times larger. See, it renamed its skeleton root for resizing skeleton. And if I come here to the outliner, you'll notice, well, where did the skeleton go? Well, the skeleton is right here. I parented the M pelvis to the locator. Now, none of the pelvis, none of the other bones, none of their settings actually changed. Their settings are all identical as they were before, so it doesn't mess anything up. Um, and you can even export out, if you really wanted to, while this is still parented to the root. And it wouldn't. It would still work just fine in Second Life. I've done it. It works just fine. Um, 
So, and you'll notice, um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our, our mesh clothing and we're going to change the mesh clothing scales to 10. 10 and 10. And because we had made the center pivot point of the mesh 0, 0, 0 at the, at the grid, it resized the mesh clothing to fit the, ten, the, the avatar, which is 10 times larger, perfectly. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, while your mesh clothing is selected, See, I just have my mesh clothing selected. It's the only thing that's selected. Um, you click Activate Auto Resizing. Okay. <clears throat> now what that script, that Mel script does that I wrote is it replaces, it hides the original avatar mesh, which is in three pieces, you know, the head, upper body, lower body. It also hid the left and right eyeball mesh. And it made visible the, um, the, this, this mesh here, which is that single uh, avatar mesh made out of a single mesh. Um, and it selected your mesh first, and then it selected this, and then it opened up, I'm going to close that, it opened up this window. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a wrap. We're going to be making this avatar mesh, the white mesh. You can see it's a different color. I made it a different color on purpose so that you can see it's different, um, the white avatar. And we're going to just click. You want to make sure you have these settings. Um, most of these settings you can, well, actually all of these settings you can change later. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. But I usually like starting out with weight threshold 0, max distance. This is just the default max distance of 12.06. Um, newer versions of Maya um, have, instead of face um, influence type, they have volume. And instead of points um, influence type, it um, has something else. And I don't remember. But they just changed the name, but it's actually the same exact thing. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to create a wrap. It's going to make the avatar mesh here an, a, a wrap that will, as it changes size, it will um, influence the shape of the mesh clothing. And the influence type we're using is the face. So it's going to influence from the face of the avatar, you know, so right here, versus the points being here, here, here. Um, I just find it actually usually works better. Face usually works better under um, most circumstances. There might be certain circumstances where points might work better, but like I said, we can change that later, and I'll show you how to do that. So once this window is open and you kind of have these settings, you just click Create. <coughs> and what it's going to, like I said, what it's going to do is going to create that wrap. Okay. Now I'm going to close that. Okay, so now if we go to wireframe unshaded and select just the mesh avatar, not the skeleton, you'll notice that this turns pink. That means this is influencing this. So now we're going to change this shape of the avatar. And all you have to do is come up here, click on female avatar uh, appearance editor, and this will open up and you can change any of these sliders. So you can make you can make any shape you want. So let's just do kind of like, let's make the breasts bigger. Boom. The avatar mesh just got bigger. So I can click here and go default. And it got smaller. Bigger. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of poke through. So here are these other, some of these other settings. Drop off is how quickly the influence loses um, loses influence on the, the mesh clothing. And so you can try playing with that. Um, um, smoothness um, will smooth the influence. So let's try point uh, let's try point four. Uh, 
Okay, <clears throat> it made it a little bit smoother, which is good. That's what we want. But you'll notice that there's a little bit more poke through now. So, um, oh, and here's where you can change the influence type. Type two is type two is faces, and type one is um, vertices. See, we can go to type one and you'll notice it, it changes quite a bit. You know, we could go to zero. And let's see, uh, point zero 0.05. And that's a little bit better, you know, but I find like I said, I find that um, influence type 2, which would be faces on older version and volume on newer versions, tends to give me a little bit better result. So, um, okay, and then we'll change that to 0.4 again. Okay, so it made it nice and smooth. And now uh, your other settings that you can play with, like I said, this is all while I have the avatar mesh itself selected. Um, you have, under outputs, you have a wrap. That's the wrap we just created. Um, I'm going to increase the envelope to 1.2. There we go. It just made the, the mesh just a little bit bigger. We have a little bit of poke through, barely through back here but that can be easily fixed in about two minutes by simply selecting the vertices and moving them after you make a duplicate, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, and then here's the weighting threshold and the max distance that you can change. Um, like say you had a, a um, you were doing a square dancing dress and it had a very big poofy skirt and you didn't want the mesh changing shape to influence the skirt so far out. That's how you can change that you could you can make the max distance shorter so that it doesn't affect all the way out to the edges of the skirt um, and again with if you were using this on a smaller avatar normal size this becomes a lot more touchy because everything is so much closer together being farther apart you can have you can you have a lot more play with with dialing in just the right um, it's not nearly as touchy just the right number Okay, so a couple of things. When you're using the larger avatar, you never want to push this button. Um, the default SL default shape or the mesh default shape. And you do not want to push smooth or bind pose, either here or in Maya Star. You don't want to push go to bind pose. Because um, that will mess up the avatar and it will shrink back down to normal. Um, if you want to get back to the default size, you can click any of these and then click reset all and that gets down to the normal size now if you notice here we have female large size and boom it reshaped the avatar I mean the mesh clothing to the large size and then there's medium okay say we want and, and you could do the same for the others here okay so the next thing you want to do is, in order to set the shape, you need to duplicate it. If you don't, it won't work. So we've just duplicated the mesh, and we've made our duplicate. And it's even 10, 10, and 10. And you could put this down to 1, 1, and 1, and then you could, uh, then you would um, rig it to your skeleton, and then you would transfer the saved mesh weights that you have saved earlier onto the duplicate and then you could move any of the vertices around that you want that you needed to move um, in order to, to um, you know fine-tune it um, and let's see the other thing is you can um, well I'm almost out of time so look at my other video called Maya Fit basic setup and it will go through the UVs and things you can do in that respect um, for fixing any of the UVs or distortions. So that's about it and we'll see you in the next video.